welcome back dear friends we have been having a very interesting discussion on financial analysis of energy audit and solar projects and we have been discussing a concept of net present value and the time value of money it is advisable for us to revise these concepts because these are very central concepts in energy audit and solar projects financial analysis and that is the reason i thought that we would need a revision of these concepts and also one or two real life problems so that you would appreciate and internalize those concepts so the plan is to discuss this present value and net present value in more detail if you remember this expression of present value we talked about the present value being the function of the interest rate because the money which one is going to be getting in the future that would be less valuable than what it is today so that is the central concept of present value that the savings generally in the energy audit projects or the solar projects that would come in the future so we need not consider them as equivalent to what we have today so the practice is the savings which one you are going to get in the future those savings in the future the future value need to be converted to the present value by dividing it by 1 plus i raised to n where n is the the number of year this is to take an analogy that a bird in hand is worth two in the bush meaning that whatever is valuable today is at a greater value than what you have in the future the net present value formula the expression which we had discussed is we talked about the cash flows and converting this cash flow cf is a cash flow that is the savings which we would get in the future this would be converting into present value by dividing it by this expression and n would be the number of years or the number of years means if n is 3 then it would be cf1 1, 1 plus i raised to 1 plus cf2 1 plus i raised to 2 plus cf3 i 1 plus i raised to 3 that way okay so it's summation of that so summation of the cash flows uh, or cfn upon 1 plus i raised to n where n would range from 1 to the value n that is the present value of the savings minus the initial investment which is made today the present value of initial investment would be the same as the initial investment so the present value of initial investment is to be subtracted so that could give us so the present value of the savings minus the initial investment would give us the net present value uh, in order to understand this we had already discussed this concept so we would be taking one numerical on this wherein let us say you have a friend and this friend is uh, borrowing 500 rupees from you okay and uh, it would be rupees if you are in us you can use the 500 dollars as a denomination so depending upon your currency you can use that currency value okay so in india i would be using it as 500 rupees in united states you would be calling it as 500 dollars okay so just for understanding i'm not saying that uh, one rupee is equal to one dollar okay so you know the exchange rate one dollar is approximately 70 rupees right like this okay so depending upon the currency which you have so if a friend needs let us say 500 dollars now and he'll be paying he'll be paying you back 560 dollars in a year so whether it is a good decision to let him have your money okay or whether you should instead borrow uh, instead invest that money in the bank right so that is the decision we need to take suppose you have a friend and your friend is asking you for money right and uh, that money is let us say about 500 dollars and he says that he would be paying you back and that amount which you'd be paying would be around 560 dollars after a year okay so you need to take a decision that whether you should be lending that money to your friend or investing it in the bank okay and the bank let us say has an interest rate of 10 percent okay so for that we will be using the present value and net present value method 
Okay. So the cash flow, the cash flow which is invested now, okay, that is 500 and 500 is invested now. So 500 would have the present value as 500 and because it is invested now, we'd be having it as minus 500, okay, it is outflow, right? And what is the inflow? Inflow means the cash inflow. So cash inflow is $560 and that $560 would come after a year, okay? So your yen becomes one, the interest rate is 10%, so 560 upon 1 plus 0.1 raised to 1. Okay, so that becomes 509, right? So 509 is the present value of 560, right? So the net present value would be what then? So the net present value would be the present value of the returns, which is 509 minus the initial investment which is 500 so 509 is the present value of this uh, returns which you would be getting after a year which is 560 dollars so 560 dollars is not 560 dollars it is actually 509 rupees or 509 dollars why is that so because we are considered the time value of money and we are discounted that value by dividing it by 1 plus 0.1 raised to 1 okay so the net present value would be still positive it is nine dollars that means that the meaning is that the decision of lending $500 to your friend would be paying you $560 in a year is financially a good decision. Financially a good decision provided the discount rate is 10%. Provided the discount rate is 10%. Right? So that is the meaning of this. Uh, this is not to be misunderstood that if your friend is in need and you need, uh, he needs some money, and you should always do a financial analysis. That is, uh, that is, is totally wrong. Okay, we are simply learning a course, and this course demands that we understand financial analysis. Doesn't mean that financial analysis need to be used even in relationships. Okay, so that is a different matter altogether. Okay, so but from the purely financial angle, this decision is a wise decision to lend the money to your friend who would be paying you back $560 because the net present value of that would be $9. You need to understand this with the help of energy conservation project, the concept of present value and net present value, you need to understand with the help of energy audit project. Let us say that you go and do an energy audit and this energy audit would give a saving okay and this savings would be over a period of three years let us say that because of some investment in some energy conservation project uh, the savings would be hundred dollars after one year then again another hundred dollars after another year and then hundred dollars and then two thousand five hundred dollars in the third year so in the third year you are actually getting two thousand six hundred dollars right uh, we need to Consider that this project which you are uh, aiming for, energy conservation project, uh, it needs some initial investment. And that initial investment, uh, we presently <clears throat> don't know, right? But we can find, we can find the present value because your initial investment is not known. So we cannot find the net present value, but we can still find the present value of the savings. So. What is the meaning of that? Finding the present value of the savings means we need, we, we need to consider the time value of money. So $100 uh, after a year is not exactly $100. $100 once you get after a year, that is worth $90. And how is that calculated? It is calculated as 100 upon 1 plus 0.1 raised to 1. Okay, that comes $90. Similarly, $100 which you would be getting at the end of second year would be much less valuable even less valuable than 90. How do you calculate that? So it is $100 upon 1.1 raised to 2, right? And that comes $82. The third year, which you would be getting $100, that would be even much less valuable, okay? Because you are going to get it in the future and that future is again far off. That is the third year, right? So that comes to 75. And how is that calculated? $100 upon 1.1 raised to 3, because yen is 3. Uh, also, in the third year, you are getting a final payment of 2500, but that 2500 is not worth 2500 because you are going to receive it after the year three, and that value could come to be around $1,800. And how is that calculated? By dividing it by 1.1 raised to three. 
So the total savings, though apparently one might feel that you are getting a saving of 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 2,500, okay, and that was 2,800. But that is not the case. The actual savings we should be getting because of this energy conservation project is $2,126. Okay, and how was that calculated? By considering a discount rate, the interest rate of 10%. So that clarifies the concept of present value. Now, how do you get the net present value? So for getting the net present value, you need to know what money was invested okay, in that energy conservation project. So let us say that about $2,000 was invested for this energy conservation project. Okay, So now it becomes pretty simple. You have the present value and you need to subtract the initial investment from it to get the net present value. Okay, so the present value we had already calculated, which was around 1878, right? And uh, sorry, uh, yeah, and 1878 plus 75 plus 82 plus 90. So it was around 2126. This was the present value of all the savings. The present value of 100 after first year, plus present value of 100 after second year, plus present value of 100 after third year, plus present value of 2500 after the third year that is 2126 so this is the actual savings considering the time value of money and we have invested only two thousand dollars it means that we are still in a positive which is about 125 dollars so this means that because your net present value is positive okay at a discount rate of 10 percent this project is worth investing okay that is the uh, financial decision we should take Okay, as an energy auditor, we would say that yes, this project is financially very attractive if the interest rate is 10%. So, to summarize whatever you have discussed, okay, uh, we have discussed the concept of present value, uh, we have discussed the concept of net present value, and we have taken an example of calculating a present value and net present value. We have also said that uh, in order to take a decision based on net present value, we would look into whether the net present value is positive or negative. So the examples which we had considered, the net present value was positive. And because the net present value was positive, we said that the project is financially viable. If the net present value turns out to be negative, we would say that on the basis of net present value, that project is unviable. Okay, so the decision making using the NPV method is the NPV has to be positive greater than zero. Okay, if it is positive, then on the financial basis, the project is viable. We are now equipped because we have learned this concept of present value and net present value. I'm sure that you would be in a position to independently, to independently do a financial audit of a solar project, of an energy audit project, provided the data is available to you. The data in the form of the savings and the data in the form of discount rate and the data in the form of initial investment. That clarifies. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.